Hey guys, David King here. Thank you for the comments on the last video. Very, very kind of you. So I thought I'd do another Flutter video. And today I want to look at infinite scrolling with a pull to refresh mechanism as well. And what do I mean by infinite scrolling? I mean that as we're scrolling through a list view and we approach the bottom, we make a request to the server for some new data. And then we add that to the list so we can continue scrolling until eventually we hit the end. So let's just have a quick look and then I'll talk about my expectations and then uh, walk through the code. So I'll, I'll just do that again, sorry. Uh, so the first thing you see is that initial loading state. Then we have our list here. And as we scroll to the bottom, we get this loading indicator. We load some more values. And eventually, we hit the very end, nothing more to load. And then the other part to this is the pull to refresh indicator, which makes a new request for fresh data. So the reason I wanted to look at this uh, this sort of uh, um, example in particular is all of the code that I saw either on YouTube or floating around online put a lot of that logic inside of a stateful widget. So all that code to manage, you know, making the requests, the loading state, etc., is inside of the stateful widget. And I don't think that's a fantastic separation of concerns. So what I wanted to do here was to pull that logic out, have our own separate models class, which deals with all of this. Uh, and then that leaves our main sort of widgets just to deal with rendering, which I think is a better approach. And then the other thing I wanted to do as well was uh, to actually create a stream controller ourselves so that we're not, uh, we're not looking at a very specific example, such as, oh, hey, if you're using Firebase, you can get the Firebase collection stream, or if you're making an HTTP request, you can get that stream there. I think the problem with um, using streams like that is it makes them feel a bit mysterious and complicated, but they're really not. So that's the other thing that I want to look at here. So by the end of this, you should have a good understanding of First of all, how to build the UI, which is pretty easy because it's Flutter. Uh, second of all, how to pull out that uh, logic into a separate class. And then third, a little bit of a deeper understanding about streams. So let's just jump on in. And we'll go through the UI part of this first, and then we'll have a look at the models, which does the logic. So the UI is pretty straightforward. I've got the main.dart, which is just a material app, which returns the home page. The home page itself is just a scaffold containing a raise button, which then navigates to the posts page here. The posts page, again, another scaffold, which returns this posts widget. So that's a custom widget. So the posts widget um, is a stateful widget. Um, and the only reason it's stateful is so that we can do some things on instantiation. So let's have a look at that. We have a scroll controller, a custom scroll controller, and this posts model, which I'm going to get to shortly, uh, containing our posts. So when this widget initializes, we're initializing that posts model. You could do this in uh, any other, many other different ways. So you could you could pass in some um, local data. So like user equals u David. Um, that could that could be something you might want to do here. We also add a listener to that scroll controller, and that just says that once we get to the very bottom, load some more. So that's just saying, uh, once we get to here, load more. And then we have our widget build itself. So we have a stream builder. That's listening to the posts.stream. And whenever that stream changes, this builder method is being called. And we're doing one of two things. If we're waiting for data, we're going to render that initial uh, loading indicator centered on the screen, or we're going to wrap a list view inside of a refresh indicator. So that refresh indicator is saying that when on refresh, so when I do this, um, call this method here on the posts. And in that list view, there's our custom scroll controller that's just saying when we hit the bottom, load more. And we also have the item builder here. But crucially, let's look at the item count. The item count is the length of those posts. So the snapshot.data gives us access uh, to uh, that list of, or yeah, that list of posts plus one. So plus one, and the plus one just means, oops, a daisy. Uh, the plus one just means um, we're rendering an extra element at the very end, um, which is either going to be that circular indicator 
uh, or this text here. So when we're looking at building those items, we either render a post, one of these, or if we've got more posts, if we're at the very end and we have more posts, circular progress indicator, and if we don't have any more posts, we're gonna render that text there. So the final thing to look at on the UI is that post itself. So this is a really simple stateless widget that expects a post model type parameter, and it just renders the image, the avatar, and that random text. So that's all there is to the UI. As you can see on that uh, posts widget, there's no complicated logic here. There's nothing to um, you know, think about loading more or anything like that beyond the, the scroll controller and the pull to refresh here. So all that logic has been abstracted away into this posts model. So let's just close all those and we'll have a look at models.dart. Now, there are three things uh, in models.dart and let's have a look at them one by one. So the first thing I've got here is a future uh, function, so called get example server data. And this is just uh, a way for me to mock a response from the server. So I'm just saying, wait for one second, then generate a, a list that is as however long that you require. So if you say get example server data 10, that would give you a list of 10 random uh, map elements here. And so you can see, um, I'm returning an unstructured map. And that's what I would expect to get back from a server, from an API. So if it returns JSON, you know, you get an unstructured map like this. So I think that's a, a good uh, representation of, of a, a request to a server. The second thing we have is the post model, that singular post model. And that just contains the body string here and the avatar string, which is a network image address. And the constructor obviously uses those two. And then we have a new factory constructor called from server map. And basically if we call postmodel.fromServerMap and we pass in an object like this, uh, what it's gonna do there is it's gonna instantiate a new post model by pulling out those uh, values from that map. So it basically converts this unstructured map into a structured post model that we can then use throughout our app. So that's a, a good thing to do. And then finally, and this is the most complicated part, but it's not complicated, is the posts model plural. So if we have a look at that, what's exposed, we've got a stream, which will return a list of post models. We have a has more Boolean. And then we have these two methods here that are exposed, refresh and load more. Everything else is private. And you can see that due to these underscores here. So when we construct a posts model class uh, objects, which we do here. So when we initialize the posts widget, we're creating a new posts model object. Uh, when that happens, uh, obviously this is the constructor. We're just putting in some basic things in place. So we're saying that our local cache of data, which is a list of map items, so it's a list of map items that we'd expect returned from a server. Uh, we have the stream controller, so we use it, we're creating a new stream controller and it's of the broadcast type. And that just means that it can have multiple listeners. Typically, most of the streams you look at are of the broadcast type. Um, so you can read into that a little bit more if you like. Uh, I don't know too much about it beyond that's just the common, the commonest stream. We have a private is loading flag. And then the public stream is uh, this stream controller dot stream. And then we're mapping we're mapping that stream to this method here. So basically what that means is when this uh, stream controller stream, when this stream here changes when an event is emitted, we're gonna basically return a new stream, a second stream, where we're mapping over the an original stream of list map items, and we are converting that data into the post model. So that's just taking advantage of uh, this uh, factory constructor here. And uh, yeah, so it just means that we can create a, a stream of list map i.e. from the server, and then we can convert it into a list of post model. And I'll get to how that's triggered shortly. And then we also have this has more flag, which is set to true. And then when we initialize, we do refresh. Okay, so let's have a look at those final two methods. 
Refresh just calls load more with a flag for clearing the cache data. So I think that should be pretty straightforward what that means. Um, it just means that, you know, when we do this, uh, we're going to basically forget everything we used to know. And now we just have those initial 10 items again, so we can continue scrolling. So that is handled here. If that's set to true, we're emptying out that cache of data and we're saying, yes, there's probably more to load. Um, when we look at the next part, we're saying, if you're, if you're calling load more, but we're already loading, well, don't do anything. Or if you call load more and there's nothing more to load, don't do anything. So we're just returning early. And the reason we're using future.value is the contract of this method is to return a future void. So a future that will then return a void. So that's what this is, a, a future that immediately returns a void. So if we returned anything else here, so let's say we return uh, null, you know, we're going to get an error uh, because um, it's expecting a, a future of void. So basically, if all these checks are passed, then we're saying that, okay, now we're loading. We're going to make a request for that data to the server. And once we have that response, so when we have that response, uh, we're going to do something with it. So we're going to add that post data to our list map here. So we're going to add it to the end of that map. And then basically, we're just saying uh, the has more flag. We're just going to stop at 30. The assumption is uh, there was only 30 items. In reality, this would probably be, be returned as a, a part of the meta response of your API request. And then crucially, we do controller.add. So dot add basically triggers an event on that stream controller. So listeners receive this event. Um, and we're passing in that entire data list. <clears throat> so when we do control controller.add, this listener here, so dot map is a listener, is being called um, with this function, which then updates this stream, which is the stream of post models. So that's the um, that's the entirety of uh, of the models dart. So let's just run through it again pretty quickly. We have a, a mock API, the post model which we can construct with a map, and a posts model which basically handles the stream and has two things: uh, refresh and load more. So let's just have a look at that in action again. We can have our initial load. We can load more at the bottom here until we get to the very very end. So as you can see, I've, I've loaded three times. So now I'm going to have over 30. And we can say uh, there's nothing more to load. So nothing more to load is based on this has more uh, uh, property here. So I'm going to put all the code on GitHub. And uh, if you have any questions, obviously just get in touch. Um, I'll be very happy to chat, uh, leave some comments, etc. And if you've enjoyed this, uh, please subscribe and I'll make more videos. I'm not exactly a, a YouTube pro or anything like that. I've got a job, uh, so that's why I'm doing this on my lunch break. Uh, but yeah, I'm very interested in Flutter. It's a, it's a fantastic framework. Uh, to love, Dart is a lovely language as well. And I'm very keen to um, basically learn the best approaches and then apply the best approaches uh, and I guess now distill it to the public as well. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Toodaloo.